on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. Yes, I did short Bitcoin, and no, it didn't go as I expected. So I'm going to explain in this video the rationale behind the trade, my trading strategy, my entry, stop and exit, and how I chose those, and what happened as a result. So all of that on today's episode of the Cryptoverse, so stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains, and I'm your host, Chris Coney. So yes, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how I did short Bitcoin yesterday, and the trade was started and ended within a 24-hour period. So let's get into it. First of all, if you've not seen my broad analysis of Bitcoin video from a few days ago, go back and watch that, because that'll explain to you my view on the $6,000 level and why it's so significant. The reason I say that is because the $6,000 level was a key level in my thinking with regards to this short trade. So just a quick recap on that. If you look at the Bitcoin chart on the four hour, just generally, you can see the bear market that we've been in. And it's actually been a technical downtrend since the beginning of like May. Nice, I say nice, nice lower highs and lower lows, nice phase one, phase two price movements going all the way down with some and every time it goes to a phase one, which is in the direction of the trend, it's sharp move, right? Sharp move down, pull back, sharp move down, pull back, sharp move down, pull back. So that pattern had established itself. So I thought, okay, fine. One of two things is going to happen. It's going to either do another sharp pull down or it's going to consolidate, in which case you can just trade between support and resistance. So that's just a quick overview of the environment with which I saw ourselves. Then what I did was... I thought, okay, let's assume that we're going to consolidate, right? Between like 6,400, which you'll see here is a white line, and maybe 5,800, which we managed to get down to. Um, and the general consensus of opinion in the crypto space is that we're going to consolidate for a little while now. And the price is still going to wave. It's not going to go exactly sideways. So there's still some volatility there that can be traded. And I was looking at it. I was looking at this perspective, for example, thinking, well, if we're going to wave like this in up and down between maybe six and a half thousand dollars and five and a half thousand dollars, then why not why not trade that, right? Because there's there's no gains to be had in terms of the bull run. So let's uh, draw, grind out some income on some trades. So that was the environment. Now let's go on to the actual trade plan itself and how I decided what to do. It was really this big pump that. Um, got me interested. So let's see if I can just put this on full screen mode so we can see it much better. So you see these two big green candles, right? They're really obvious. They just came, this is the one hour chart. So in one hour, it just pumped straight up from $5,800 right up to about 6,300. Two hours later, boom, it pumped again from about 6,200 to near enough 6,400. Now it was this 6,400 candle with this big head on it that kind of got my attention. You see that it when the price went above this downtrend line, that's why it's got a big head on it. All those high prices were rejected. And also notice that the horizontal line here at 6,400 was also around about where the buying power run out of steam. So I was thinking, okay, that's a good, that's a good sign. That's a good sign that it's going to go down again. And also generally, like I said in the broad analysis video, do you see these pumps? In, in the four hour chart and on the one hour chart. And then once all the buyers are exhausted, it's just the selling pressure and the gravity takes over and it just returns, gets pulled back to, down towards 6,000 again. And evidence from this candle with the big head on it, that just shows that people were taking the opportunity to pull profits out, showing a lack of confidence in the market, in my view, because people are like, oh, this is, this is like a once in a, not lifetime, once in a year opportunity to take some profits at a reasonably high level in Bitcoin. So pull their money off the table and wait for the next bull run. So they were taking the opportunity of a temporary pump to pull some money off the table. So that's selling pressure again. So I thought it looks like we're going to, after this, looking at the previous pattern, retrace back down to 6,000 for, I'm going to trade that. And I did. So here was the trade plan. You'll see that there's a big green box. So that was my profit zone. I wanted to it to ride it from the top of the green box to the bottom of the green box. And then the red box is my stop loss zone. So I entered on this orange line here. You can see it says entry on the far right of the chart. 
The entry was at $6,386. My stop was at $6,451, and the old profit target was way down there at $6,020. I put it at $6,020 because I wanted to get out a decent amount above $6,000 because the probability was that if it got to $6,000, that's where it was going to bounce and start going up again. So I wanted to squeeze as much juice out of the trade as I could on its way back to $6,000, but get out before the bounce, right? I'm willing to sacrifice that last bit to make sure I get out before it turns around to maximize the profit. So why did I choose the um, entry point that I chose? Well, it was right after this big head candle, right? I thought, okay, brilliant. And then I saw these two red candles with big heads on them as well. Also, those prices were being rejected by the downtrend line. So I thought that's good enough. So I went when I saw the second red candle here, I was just at the market, put in a position, going short. It was like a $10 contract, 50 times leverage. Uh, it was on BitMEX, which we'll look at in just a second. And away we went with the trade. Of course, I planned out the stop loss beforehand. And as you can see here, I chose 64.51 which was a couple of dollars above the high of these the these two candles here. I thought that's good enough. If it returns and breaks the highs of these candles, mm, chances are we're going to carry on going up. And I ignored this massive head because that was just a, a freak event in my view. These two candles are way more rational, which is why I used those as my stop loss choice. So those are two levels explained. There's three levels explained. That's how I chose the entry, the stop and the profit target. In terms of reward to risk ratio, you can see that the target was like 5.74% and the loss was like 1%. So that means I was coming out after Bitcoin had gone up 1%, but I was taking profit after Bitcoin had gone down 5.74%, right? So it was a 5 to 1, nearly 6 to 1 reward to risk ratio. Pretty, pretty good. In actual dollar terms, I was risking about $250 if I got the full loss, if the stop loss was hit. I stood to lose about $250, and if it went all the way to my profit target and I got the full juice out of it, I'd have made about $1,500, right? So that's, it was, it was, I was willing to risk the $250 to make the $1,500 on the balance of probabilities, right? So that was the trade setup. Now, how it played out was this. It kind of bimbled around for a while. These are one-hour candles, remember? And I almost got stopped out here at about 1 p.m. You can see how close the high comes to the stop loss. It comes to within two dollars of it, I think. Yeah, it was um, the high of that candle was six four four nine, and my stop loss was at six four five one. So it was two dollars away, actually a dollar eighty away from stopping me out. But and in that circumstance, you're almost at the maximum loss. You, you've almost lost the whole two hundred fifty dollar position at that point, and that's where you're really tested. You've planned the trade though. Just stick to the plan, right? Don't don't adjust it mid trade. I'd already chosen that level for a reason and just stick to it. Don't pull it off the table, let it run. And as you can see, what that was a big green candle, right? At one point during that hour, but then it completely turned around, went back under 6,400, which was encouraging to me. Big old bearish looking sort of shooting star kind of candle and then continued to fall. Now what I did two hours later, around about 3 p.m. And I was checking this on my phone periodically during the day. I saw this candle, which went down below my entry point. I thought, okay, we're in some nice profit now. And you can see the tail on that candle showed that part, 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 partial, partway through that hour, it was a great big red candle. It was full bodied. And I thought, this is looking good. However, by the end of that hour, it's got a big tail on it. And that's a bullish signal. I was like, oh dear. It looks like we may be getting a turn around here. It's time to manage risk. So what I did was I decided to move my stop loss up to break even, just in case that was the turnaround. So I moved it to a few dollars lower than my entry, just so that with the spread, I got stopped out at break even. And lo and behold, the following hour, look at this green sort of hammer candle. The high of that candle, which you may or not, may not be able to see, it pretty much stopped me out. It did stop me out. It just about went over that level. And if I stretch it enough, you'll be able to see the high of this green candle uh, did actually pierce my entry point, which by this time, was also my stop loss. So that's that. It did fall further after that, but now as you can see since then, it's gone a little bit sideways. Now, as always, when you finish the trade and you've closed it out, win, lose or draw, look, look back on it, reflect on it, 
Do you agree with your entry point? Do you agree with the original stop loss point? Do you agree with your profit target? And do you agree with how you manage the trade mid trade? I would say I was happy with the choices of entry stop and the profit target. What I'm not particularly happy with was when I decided to move the stop loss. If I'd have been a bit more ballsy and a bit more risky, I would have waited and done a trailing stop. So this is a strategy that you can use sometimes. And I, I teach this in the Master Cryptocurrency Trader course and actually tell students just by default to use a trailing stop loss. So I'm not being too hard on myself because that candle that I did decide to move my stop loss up on, that red candle with the big tail, that was a bullish signal. So that was perfectly reasonable to decide to preserve my capital because number one rule of trading is don't lose money because the money you lose is harder to get back. That's an axiom. The money you lose is harder to get back. If you lose half your money, you then have to double your money to get back to break even. That's bad. And it's harder to double your money than it is to lose half of it. So always preserve your capital. So when I thought, mm, this is looking like it's going to turn around, move my stop loss up and actually got stopped at a break even. It's actually a loss of 357 Satoshis, if you must know. So it was a small, tiny, tiny, tiny loss. It's about two cents that I lost on that, which is fine. In retrospect, what I should have done is once we got in some decent profit, I should have waited for some two decent red candles in my favor and then trailed the stop every two red candles. So what that would have looked like was a... Actually, I'll, I'll not wave my mouse over it. I'll draw it on the on the edit instead. It would have been this red candle and then waited for the second red candle and then moved my stop loss up ju just above the high of the second red candle, then waited two more red candles and I would have moved my stop loss down even more, locking in profit. And then I would just let the price take me out, right? And if I'd have done that, I would have got stopped out just above the high of this second red candle a couple of hours later, which would have been around about 9 p.m. But it would have happened automatically because I'd have done it with orders. And I'd have made, I don't know, about a couple of hundred dollars, I reckon, which would have been fine because then I couldn't possibly lose. So that's the only thing that I could think I could have improved about that trade was be a bit more aggressive, let the trade run a bit, you know, not be so scared of the of the bullish signal from that candle. And then I could have locked in a couple of hundred dollars profit. And as you see now, it's just gone sideways. It even went back into the loss zone. Had I left the trade as it was and not done any money management, well, I'd still be in the trade right now, right? The, the stop loss, the original stop loss has, wouldn't have been hit and it would have just been bouncing around. But you can see over the last four, 24 hours, it's just been completely sideways in this tight range between 6,300 and 6,400. So that's that. You can also see how it's now interacting with the downtrend line, um, kind of pulling the price down below 6,400 as well. So overall, I'm quite happy with that trade. You know, I did say I'd show you BitMEX. So this is what I used. BitMEX is, to me, it's, it's absolutely superb. The interface is brilliant. You can just adjust everything. You know, you can place all of the pieces wherever you want them. It has trading view built in, so you can do all of that shenanigans I just did on uh, Coinigy, except you can do it right inside of BitMEX. You can take screenshots and then you can do all your trade setups and so on. The key thing with BitMEX is you can do up to 100 times leverage, which I do not recommend if you're an amateur trader. This whole experience has made me think, well, I, I really should add a new module onto the Master Cryptocurrency Trader course on how to do leverage trading because otherwise you've got no way to make money in a downward market. At the moment, all the strategies from the Master Crypto Trader course uh, rely on it, the, the trend based, their trend based strategies. Um, and unless you have some kind of system like BitMEX, you can't use those strategies in a down market. So that's when I thought, oh, the course isn't, isn't, it's missing something. If we can't make money in up markets and down markets, you know, that's not a full trading system, is it? So when I did all this malarkey, I thought definitely this is the kind of stuff I need to add on to the Master Crypto Trader course. So don't get me wrong. If you go and take the Master Cryptocurrency Trader course now, this stuff with BitMEX and the shorting stuff and the leverage is not in there, right? This experience has kind of made me think I need to put it in there. So I just want to show you BitMEX because it's so cool, right? On the left-hand side, you've got your order form. I basically put in a 10, 10 contracts, put in the amount of words, went short, stuck it in at 50 times leverage. That got me the $250 risk for the $1,500 reward potential. In the end, I got stopped out by an automated order at pretty much break even. 
So there we jolly well go. That's my story of how I shorted Bitcoin yesterday. It didn't go really the way I thought it would, but that's all I've got for you today. So thanks very much for joining me. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to request a video or give me feedback, do that down below in the comments. If you want to get notified and follow my future videos, news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains, click subscribe, click the bell, and then you'll get notifications. And if you do actually want to take any one of my online courses, say if you want to learn how a blockchain works under the hood, take the Master Cryptocurrency Trader course. If you don't care about the tech and just want to learn what to do with crypto, I like make and save money with Bitcoin, check out the Secrets of the Bitcoin Triangle course. And if you want to learn trading strategies, technical analysis, and a complete trading system, excluding shorting, until I add that, take the Master Cryptocurrency Trader course. All right, guys, that is all for today. I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.